goals that we had last night. Um, really, there's not a whole lot today except we have two birthdays. Linda Myers was yesterday and Pastors is tomorrow.
between the love of Christ crucified and risen. God who searches us and knows us, you have shown us what is good, but we have looked to other places to find our way. We have not been just in our dealings with others. We have chosen revenge over mercy. We have promoted ourselves instead of walking humbly with you. With what shall we come before you? Forgive us our sin and show us your salvation. In the face of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved of God, you have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, poured out for you in the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. Receive the baptism, receive the gift of the promise of baptism. You are God's child. Your sins are forgiven. Rejoice and be glad, for yours is the reign of heaven.
reading is found in Isaiah, chapter 58, beginning at the first verse. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet, day after day they seek me, and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness, and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but do you not see? Why humble ourselves, but do you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interests on your fast day, and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight, and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on your hand. Is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble myself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush, and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the bonds of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places, and make your bones strong, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. Word of God, word of God. Thanks be to God. Please read responsibly Psalm 112, beginning at the first verse. Hallelujah! Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in God's commandments. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous and lengthy, and to manage their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see their desire upon their enemies. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head for that. The wicked will see it and be angry. They will gnash their teeth and run away. The desire of the wicked will perish. Though people such as the Corinthians are enamored with human philosophy and wisdom, Paul continuously presents God's hidden wisdom, which is Jesus Christ crucified. True spiritual maturity involves judging ourselves and others in light of God's revelation in the cross. The second reading is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words of wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My spirit
speech and my proclamation were not with, with plausible words of wisdom, but with the demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet, among the mature, we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish. But we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would have to crucify the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human, except the human spirit that is within? So also no one comprehends what is truly God's, except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And we speak of these things in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. Those who are unspiritual do not receive the gifts of God's Spirit, for they are foolishness to them, and they are unable to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Those who are spiritually discerned those who are spiritual discern all things, and they are themselves subject to no one else's scrutiny. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Now that's good. That's a lot of salt. That's what I like. What do you think? Think it's going to be just right? No? <laughs> it's going to be a little salty, do you think? Uh, yeah, maybe I did get a little carried away. But you'll hear in my message today that I do like salt. So. But you know, um, Jesus tells us that we are the salt of the earth. Pretty interesting, huh? And like, and, and I'm going to explain in my message too, that salt is very important, especially back in the biblical days. It's still important today too. But back in biblical times, it was a very precious commodity. People would even trade with salt and everything. It was used like money. And um, the thing is, like salt, and I think that what maybe Jesus was getting at was that just like this popcorn, you don't really need a lot of salt on it. When, and you can taste the salt right away, can't you, when you put it on. You just need a little bit. And so when Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth, it means that you are called to be his follower. You are called to be kind to other people. Um, and to be, to be representatives of the way Jesus was. And it doesn't really take much at all to be the salt of the earth, just like the, the, salty, the saltiness of salt. Um, it will only take some very small acts, like just saying hi to someone that maybe looks like they're kind of having a bad day, or smiling at them even can be a wonderful thing to make someone's day. Or maybe sitting with someone in the, in the cafeteria at school who's sitting alone with their lunch. Um, or just be making, making that person your friend. Just simple little acts, just like a little bit of salt, can make us wonderful workers in God's nature. So can you remember that? Just your smile. Just be saying a kind word. Should we say a little prayer? Dear God, you tell us we are the salt of the earth light of the world. Help us to be just that in your kingdom. Help us to bring people to know you by our acts of kindness and just simply being there for other people. We pray this in Jesus' name and all of God's children say, Amen. All right, thanks for coming up.
It's used in food, we know that. It's used for cleaning. It's used as medicine. Anyone ever remember your mom telling you to gargle when you had a sore throat? Gargle with some warm salt water. I remember my mom telling me that. Saline, that's a, a form of salt. Or how about Epsom salts? Um, for the aches and pains in our body, they're softening our skin. I've even read that salt is good, I didn't know this, but I read this the other day. Salt is good for bee stings and mosquito bites. Yeah. Uh, you can use it evidently for the perfect boiled or poached egg. And these days you can get it in all kinds of different forms. Paint, black, gray, flaky, crystal, sand, rock. All these different things when you go to the grocery store are there. Are there. Another thing I remember, boy, I am aging myself these days, but, um, you, you know, you remember when you used to go to the store and there'd be you know, two choices, Morton iodized or Morton non-iodized. <laughs> that was it. Now we've got all kinds of, of things we can, uh, different forms of salt. And our bodies need salt. Our heart and our muscles can't function without enough salt in our bodies. So to be told by Jesus that we are the salt of the earth and that it is a good thing at least makes me feel a little bit better about my salt addiction. Jesus telling uh, about salt losing its flavor, though, kind of had me curious and had me doing a little bit of research on that. And it turns out that it is really, really difficult for salt to lose its flavor, almost impossible at least on its own. It takes human intervention, it takes us to dilute the salt for it to lose its flavor. Perhaps Jesus is saying, you know, this is the way God created you. You are the salt of the earth. So don't mess with it. Jesus then goes on to say, we are not only salt, but we are the light of the world. The Gospel of John tells us that Jesus is the light of the world. And now Jesus is here at the Sermon on the Mount, that, that famous sermon that he uh, preaches, and he's telling his followers, we are the light of the world. Another priceless commodity. Now the Romans back in Jesus' day had a saying that there is nothing more useful than sun and salt. Hmm. So it sounds like Jesus is really trying to hit home with the people here. Notice that Jesus, however, is not saying you can be the salt of the earth or the light of the world if you really want to be, or you can be the salt of the earth or the light of the world uh, if you really try hard enough or if you work hard enough or if you study hard enough. Jesus simply says, you are, you are the salt of the earth, and you are the light of the world. You are the most precious and useful thing in the world. We have everything we take within us to be followers of Christ, to be God's chosen. 